And so now we welcome to join us this morning, our Facebook family that is now joining us live. I want to say good morning to you. And I'm gonna make a few little adjustments with my screen so that I can, um, what am I doing? I know what I'm doing, bear, bear with me, bear with me. I think I know what I'm doing <laughs> anyway. I had uh, shared with the tech team this morning a little bit beforehand that my intention was to stand during the um, during my talk uh, because often when I sit, my knee jumps bumps against the podium or I get excitement and will shake the podium. And so some of you may have seen these little notes that the tech team shares with me that says um, knees. Uh, so I'm doing something a little different this morning, and I'm going to be standing for this part of our service. So again, good morning and welcome home to our Facebook family. I want to thank everyone who participated last week uh, to create a, an outstanding celebration service in my absence. Um, and I watched the Facebook Live replay and saw some of the wonderful hats, and I really was was, was feeling that I missed out on something. So we're gonna have to do the hat day again on the Sunday when I am here. Um, we're continuing with our 2021 annual theme of timeless vision, timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision. Our theme for the month of February is one journey, many paths. And our talk for consideration today is a clean slate. On last Sunday, our speaker, Denise Kwaku, our practitioner, Denise Kwaku, offered a very powerful action, call to action and invited us to consider three things. And that is to find the places in our life where we've stopped remembering the limitless power of God, to practice letting go and surrender to the divine will unfolding, and to see magic and high vision oh, waiting yeah to be revealed. Everyone, please take a moment and mute yourself. Thank you. If you're comfortable doing so, and those of us who have been on Zooms uh, quite a bit during the last 12 months now, it feels like, um, if, if you're willing, just drop a little comment in the Zoom chat or in the Facebook comments, and just share your experience of the call to action that Denise offered to us last week. Uh, this is a way of creating connection via community. So, and this is if you're willing to do so. You know, I, I frequently share with you what I call some of my best me comedy show moments. And these often happen when I'm multitasking in my head. Um, so a couple of days ago, I wanted rice with my dinner. And so I set up the rice cooker, I measured the water and the rice, and I added the salt and the oil to the water, uh, put everything in, put the lid on the rice cooker, press the start button, and went on to the next thing. And at some point, it just kind of occurred to me, oh, you're missing the aroma of the cooking rice in the apartment. And so I looked over at the rice cooker and realized I had forgotten to plug it in. And so the message to me out of that was the energy source is always there. Just plug into it. And this is what I offer to us this morning is to recognize that the energy source of our life is always there. And all that's required of us is to plug into it. And I offer this context for our February theme, One Journey, Many Paths we are encouraged to move from thinking of the divine to feeling it and to experiencing it. Our Science of Mind and New Thought teachings remind us the mystical experiences of those that transcend any one path, any one religion, or any one tradition. We may think of this as Climbing a mountain that has many paths, that has many trails, that eventually will lead to the top of the mountain. 
or we may think of it as one tree with many branches, or one river that has many wells. And all of this is to support us in recognizing that there is no one way, there is no one way to the true nature of spirit. And because we're not bound by a precedent, a previous event or action, but we are freed by principle and unchangeable spiritual truth, we are readily able to surrender past experiences and embody spirit directly. And this takes us back to our affirmative statement from Emerson this morning, where he reminds us to finish each day and be done with it. When we do that, we enter into the mode where God is ever present and how we experience God is done in new and meaningful ways. And there are a couple of ways that this appears. Um, one is through self-awareness. Self-awareness is the practice that activates our alignment with spiritual truth principles. It is a practice of being conscious of our motivations, our internal dialogue, and our hidden beliefs. For some, the mere mention of Black History Month or Black Lives Matter or gender identification can trigger unexamined hidden beliefs. Self-awareness is a call to take inner action, to be willing to observe and take responsibility for our internal and external beliefs and choices. Self-awareness is the foundation for conscious choice. There are times when we have to plug into our self-awareness to be self-aware. And the other support for us is silence. Silence creates an inner spaciousness to become aware of our own consciousness, to experience the rise and fall of thoughts and feelings without attachment or judgment. Silence invites us to become comfortable with our own body, mind, and to release distractions that self-awareness so that self-awareness has a space to grow. Silence invites us to become comfortable within our own body, mind, and spirit so that we release distractions and allow that space for self-awareness to grow. Out of self-awareness and silence, these two work hand in hand with one another. Out of self-awareness and silence, we awaken to life and we are afforded a clean slate. Now, whether we welcome the clean slate or it's thrust up on us, however it occurs, it gives us the opportunity for greater clarity, creativity, and for new possibilities to emerge. Every beginning represents the ending of something else. And I think at this point, we will all agree that 2020 was an example of something being thrust upon us that allows us to begin a clean slate for we are truly creating a new normal. While we may recognize beliefs, behaviors, or situations that, that no longer serve us, they are not necessarily easy to release. Ask me how I know. To cultivate a clean slate at any moment in our lives. And we can do it. However, it requires the willingness to embrace that moment, confront whatever pain or promise exists therein, and practice the presence of the divine. And I have three points I'd like to share with you that illustrate for me the clean slate. And I call these the three C's of life, choice, chance, and change. Choice, chance, and change. Let's look at the first one, choice. Have you ever prayed for a do-over or a second chance or a clean slate only to have it happen 
and find yourself confronted with a curious combination of exhilaration and terror. It's like, oh my God, I have what I asked for. Uh, oh my God, what do I do with this? We're, we're, we're caught in that conjury of exhilaration and terror. Ah, the allure of the blank page, that empty canvas, that open road, the aroma of freshly cut grass or whatever allures us to that blank slate. It is both the hope and the fear inherent in what I call life happenings, such as marriage, forming a new partnership, parenthood, divorce, a career change, moving, losses, and successes. You know, quite often when we're looking at those things of life happens that uh, we want to change or alter or, or maybe forget about or erase from our consciousness. We include the negatives. Let's also include in that our successes because our successes often emerge out of painful situations. It's, called, it's that call to trust, to trust that inner presence and be with the flow of life. The good news, this clean slate offers us the opportunity to tap into the source of creation and infinite potentiality for a fresh start. Ernest Holmes writes this in this little book, A New Design for Living on page 118. It is often very difficult for us to realize that we are living in a timeless universe. And the fact that as far as the infinite is concerned, everything exists as if it were present reality neither bound by past nor by the future. Rather, life is something that is eternally made new. And also, if we go to the Bible in Revelation 21 and 5, it is written, Behold, I make all things new. And that's a very interesting story within the book of Revelation. At some point, I'll maybe present that, because in, in this book of Revelation, there are actually two books. Uh, and I'll unpack that at, at a different time. But I just want you to hold on to this idea that all things are made new. Our second C is chance. Our Center for Spiritual Living Vision says, we envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought. And, and, and I wish that I had the knowledge of how to take my computer and shift it to this beautiful banner that we have hanging in the sanctuary that you can't see from this angle. But I've always been inspired by this banner whenever I have walked into the center, even before becoming the senior minister. And it reads, Awakening Humanity to its Spiritual Magnificence. There's just something about that little simple statement that really resonates with me. And to awaken to the spiritual magnificence, we get, begin by cultivating self-awareness and self-reflection. This is what a clean slate offers to us, self-awareness and self-reflection. We are given the opportunity to consider establishing a routine or examining our beliefs and behaviors to determine whether or not they still serve us. Using our earlier example of hidden beliefs related to Black History Month or Black Lives Matters or gender identification, we can create a clean slate in our mind by removing stories of fear or of the other, quote unquote, and planting rose bushes or other fragrant thoughts of love and inclusion. All it requires is that we change our thinking, change our thinking, change our mind, change our thinking, change the way that life unfolds for us. In the process of discovering these hidden beliefs, we may ask, where did this idea originate? Where did this thought first come into my mind? What is my first recall of being taught that there's something different about 
the other? Am I living in integrity with my personal and spiritual values? Is another question we ask. Am I living in integrity with my personal and spiritual values? Another question that we may ask is, who would I be without this belief or fear or behavior? And another piece of good news for you, as detrimental beliefs are removed from consciousness, there is clarity and space for new possibilities to emerge. And I just want to pause for a moment and allow you to give some thought to this. Think about a belief that you may have held on to, and something occurred in life that caused you to take a look at that belief and really question, does this still serve me? And out of that questioning, there was that aha moment, that internal aha moment that said, no, this no longer serves me. I can create a new belief. How did that feel? How, how did it feel to experience those new possibilities emerging from within? And that leads into our third C, which is change. The birth of anything new is generally preceded by pain and messiness. Before we can enjoy the newness of a home remodeling project or order out of a clean closet, or for me, putting everything on that surface that's hidden outside of the Zoom booth on the floor and sorting it out to bring some, some order out of that chaos. We must first contend with the destruction and disorder that can temporarily look and feel worse than how it started out. And I also add to that my recent experience of moving from one location to another and continuing to bring order out of seeming chaos. And, and I continually recall to mind those words of encouragement that many have offered me is that Rome was not built in a day. Your move did not occur in one day. And allow it the time to unfold as you adjust to the new living space, as you adjust to the new visual atmosphere that, that you're choosing to create in your sanctuary. This is my encouragement to to really be still, to be in that silence, and to allow order to emerge out of what I call chaos. Self-awareness encompasses, again, our heart and feeling, as well as the mind. Again, the body-mind-spirit connection. The emotions that emerge as a slate is being cleared can be difficult to experience and manage. I encourage you and I invite you to stay with it. Our emotions, which we sometimes will try and put on a shelf or, or silence or suppress, our, si our emotions are really our inner GPS, letting us know that if our thoughts and subsequent emotions are moving us further from or closer to our source those emotions, those things that we don't want to handle, or those experiences that have been pressed down and pressed down and pressed down in life. Out of silence, out of our meditation, out of our spiritual practices, those things are going to come up. And so we have a tendency to fight them and push them back down. I wanna encourage you to just stay with them, allow those emotions to come up, because that is how we clean the slate. That is how we move into a new blank canvas to create something that is moving us closer to the source. We don't want to move further away from it. Those old things have taken us away from source. We want to bring them back into alignment, bring ourselves back into that center where what it is that we are creating, what it is that we're choosing to experience in our life are those things that are moving us closer to our source. Remembering 
we're only moving closer to the awareness of the indwelling presence because that indwelling presence has never left us. We may have momentarily attempted, momentarily attempted to put it on a lower shelf, but it has never left us. Ernest Holmes offers this in Questions and Answers of the Science of Mind on page 31. And he writes, treatment or affirmative prayer opens up avenues of thought, expands consciousness, and lets reality through. It clarifies the mentality, removes the obstructions of thought, and lets the light in. And of course, we like to celebrate the light the external light on a bright and beautiful day as it is here in the Monterey Bay area. And as a number of you identified as we were just kind of checking in at the beginning of service, uh, it's a beautiful day in many other locations. And beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. So for some to be snowed in is a beautiful day. To have an overcast or to have fog is a beautiful day. We resonate with wherever we are because that is how the light reflects from within. And before moving into our conclusion and call to action, I just want to share a personal clean the slate story. And it is my, my hope and desire that this will help you to identify something in your life that represents a clean slate story. Uh, my daughters are familiar with the story because they were active participants in it to a certain degree. Doing an annual wellness checkup a few years ago uh, with my urologist, uh, my blood test revealed an elevated PSA. Um, and the numbers were, were just so much higher. They were basically off the chart from what it had been in the past. And so we ordered a second blood test. And the second blood test came back with the numbers even higher. And so that put me into that place. You know, I really had to come to grips with my own self and, and ask, do I succumb to fear or do I activate wellness? And so this was followed by a series of tests and other um, blood tests and, and other tests. Um, and one of the tests indicated the possibility of the presence of pancreatic, of, uh, yeah, pancreatic cancer, no, prostate cancer, prostate cancer, excuse me. And so through all of this, I kept the faith and I continually declared my wholeness and my perfection. And this is where I used a denial affirmation. You know, most of our affirmations are positive and sometimes we have to go to denial. We just have to say, like the story of this old practitioner that sat in a rocking chair and when people would come to her with whatever their condition was, her only response was, taint so, taint so. And so I, I did a taint so denial affirmation and I said, this is not the truth of who I am. And I followed that with an affirmative affirmation saying, the truth is that I am whole, perfect and complete in the mind and the eye of spirit. And so one more step in the process was a biopsy. And the biopsy came back negative. And so we went in to see the doctor for the results. He was just baffled. Uh, and he said, because of the markings that had showed up on one of the other tests that uh, there, he was just convinced that something had to be there. And so he said, I'm gonna have pathology run some more tests and look at it from some different angles. And so I agreed. I said, yes, let's do that because I really want to know, you know, if anything is there. And at the same time, in my head, I was saying, run all the results that you want. You know, this is where that Leo came out. Do what you have to do. But I know, and I know that I know, the truth of me is that I am whole, perfect, and complete, and there is no cancer in my body. Nothing additional came back from pathology. In fact, he hasn't even mentioned whether or not he sent them back to pathology. And I'm not going to follow that line of, I'm not going to open up that line of questioning. All of my subsequent blood tests, though, have come back within the normal number range. 
And so my clean slate experience is that something that appeared to be there that was a frightening, a life-threatening, a life-changing experience was not there because I declared this is not the truth of my reality. That's my clean slate story. What is your clean slate story? Remember, we are called to practice the presence regularly. And as we intentionally release thoughts of the past or of the future and ground ourselves in the present, experiencing whatever understanding or gift is in this moment for us, let's appreciate the moment that is here for us right now. And so our call to action today is to, and um, I've asked our tech team to, to put this into the chat for you. Permit yourself to indulge in whatever feeds your soul, sacred service, nature, time with friends, music, creative endeavors, laughter, etc. And finally, honor your body with plenty of sleep. This is a constant reminder to me to honor my body with plenty of sleep. Enlightenment is a destructive process. Let that rest for a moment. Enlightenment is a destructive process. It has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It is seen through the facade of pretense. It is the complete eradication of everything we imagined to be true. And this is the quote by Adeshanti. And Meister Eckhart reminds us to be willing to be a beginner every single morning. And our one sentence affirmation to take for this week is, I am open to the promise of a clean slate, which every moment holds. I am open to the promise of a clean slate, which every moment holds. And I invite us to pray together. And I offer this affirmative prayer from an email that I subscribed to, the Affirmative Prayer Library. And the prayer for today is a clean slate. And so we turn within to the awareness, know that we know that there is only one mind. It is ever present and all inclusive divine mind. This mind is forever renewing itself it is the birthplace of all new ideas and creative solutions. Through this one mind, all of life is traveling towards a fuller expression of freedom and joy. My mind is an essential aspect of the one mind. The creativity of the divine mind expresses through me. The freedom and joy of the one life lives in me. I accept the great realization of the power of renewal that has been bestowed upon me. I travel my unique path forever connected with the one mind. Creative solutions and new ideas come to me daily. I'm moving towards a greater experience of freedom and joy for myself and all beings. I cooperate with the guidance afforded to me by the unrestricted generosity of spirit. Rejoicing in the re revealing of this realization, I accept it is done through the one mind. And I bless each one that is joining us today, whether you're on the Facebook Live now, whether you're on the Zoom now, or whether you will be watching the Facebook Live at another time that is convenient. 
recognizing that we're all on this path, this journey of awakening to the divine magnificence that we are, and that each day offers a clean slate. Releasing all of this into the law, which says yes, I simply allow it to be and affirm it by saying, and so it is. Thank you and good morning. And now it is time for us to share in the divine flow of life in the giving and receiving. It is time for us to celebrate each other with our gifts of love, this financial substance that is provided for us. And our abundance statement is, I recognize the presence of God within as the source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could ever desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. I release this visible substance as an outer symbol of my inner supply into the physical world. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And just as a reminder, we have several ways to donate to the center. You can mail a check in and the address is on your screen. You can go to our secure website. That address is on your screen. And for my younger generation, you can text to give at 831-246-9694. And I teasingly say my younger generation because I consider myself to be very adventurous, but the text to give is something I have not yet figured out. So thank you to our Facebook friends and I enjoin you, I invite you to join us next Sunday where we will continue our February series, One Journey with Many Paths. And the topic will be the infinite invisible. And it is also Valentine's Day. So dress festively in Valentine attire. So thank you to our Facebook family. We love you. We appreciate you. And we thank God for you.